Hello, and welcome to the Vlogging Pod. Tonight, we are joined by James Lindbergh. <laughs> William James Lindbergh, excuse me. Make sure I get that in there correctly. How are yes. you tonight, William? I'm doing pretty great. It was this oh, afternoon for me. Oh, yes, yes, afternoon. Well, it's still light out. You know, it still works for me here. <laughs> yeah. So, yeah, uh... Go ahead. Well, I was on the other side of the country over in Oregon, so. Oh, okay. I got you. I have never been to Oregon, but nice. Well, My husband's. Just... Yeah, sorry. No, go ahead. Go ahead. My, you're from Ohio. My, my, I have some people that, that are from Ohio. My, um, my mother's, um, maternal mother's family. They. Nice. They came out. They came. They came over on the Mayflower, and um, and they settled in Ohio. Nice. So originally from here, then. Well, some of me. Some of you. <laughs> yeah. Well, that's just, all right. My my husband's from out west. I see. Yeah, he's uh, yeah. Utah, Colorado. Um, and there's something else I'm missing. I can't. I think maybe Idaho, but don't quote me on. It. I know his mother and his brother live in Idaho currently. So, they're little, yeah, they're spread out west. So, all, yeah. all in red I, states. Oh, yeah. <laughs> I, I know there are many parts to your career choices, but I'd like to start off talking about you as a YouTube influencer. So, let's dive right into that and talk about your content. Tell me about that as for your 99 show. The 999 show. Yeah, it's. It kind of started out wanting to do mostly like paranormal stuff, but I um I let the analytics decide where the topics sent me, and uh -huh. which is probably it's probably a bad thing to do, but but nevertheless that's the what what I did, and and so um in February I started like um, trying an experiment of posting content every single day and just to see what that would do. So, um, it, 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 and it, it, it helped to explode some of my, my numbers, just like, like they say, it didn't explode it as much as some YouTube gurus say it does, but it, uh -huh. you know, it was just kind of a slow going thing. And, um, then, um, I wasn't gonna like go in to do poetry, but I sort of dive. I sort of started doing poetry, and um, mostly I started doing poetry because when I got COVID, I my voice is now like this, and it's not as smooth as it was before, and so I went went in and started for my long form content. I started posting uh, stuff that I had previously recorded um like 10 plus years ago all of my, my my good poems and so forth and then i would take those poems and um either use the stock footage um platform i subscribe to so i can get like access to uh licensed music and um licensed stock footage or use my own footage or I, and then those, those things. And then I also use AI art generators in order to, to do the, to do the visuals. And, um, and I just kind of plug parts of my poem into those prompts until it, until I get an image out that I like. And, oh. and that takes a lot of time. That's all I can say. <laughs> <laughs> Well, actually, how I got to doing that was it actually started in around in the late 90s. And um, a friend from high school was worked for a cable access TV network, and he wanted to feature my poetry um, for like just like a, a half hour. And so I, and. And so he filmed me and reading poetry and so forth. And that's how I got the bug 
And then I think that was like in like 97, 98. And then in around 2000, between some place, but it was about a period of 18 months before the end of 2003, I had my own cable access TV show where I was um, filming the open mics that I had organized. And, and then, and then I also did other things because I did that open mic every other month, but then I ended up wanting to do weekly content. And so I I was just building in building stuff and, and just doing stuff. And and this relates into your YouTube. Yes, it does. Because, because that's where, where it, it, it all began. And I was doing mostly poetry at that time. Right. And then I had tried poetry on YouTube a couple other times and, and was not all that successful. But it was mostly because I didn't stay on task. And then I would end up, you know, um, the day job would end up taking too much time. And then I wouldn't be able to do any of the YouTube stuff. Right. Um, I, I did take a peek at your YouTube. And I do see that you get views on the files. I mean, on your videos, excuse me, your video files that you've posted. Mm -hmm. How do you figure that your scheduling, how does that work as far as your task work is keeping it scheduled? Tell me about that. Tell me about the tasking to keep it organized, to be able to put it up. Well, when I started doing YouTube shorts on this, this big telephone, I'm, I, 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 um, came in at, that it was given to me a couple months ago. Um, I started, was a, I had access to the YouTube studio app and, uh-huh. but my, pre, my previous telephone, the memory was too small and I couldn't, I couldn't use any more apps on it. So I, I couldn't, didn't have access. And so I've been playing with that since while well, I've been recovering from COVID uh-huh. and, and I started, um, just doing those, you know, 12 to 15 second long, um, shorts. And I, and, but what I, I, in a lot of the, one of the featured characters, it seems to get a lot of hits is the dog. Um, for some reason people like dogs and then, <laughs> and then, um, and then I'll do some little tricksy things like, um, there'll, there'll be the, 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 the YouTube studio, free music that you can use that you know for the for the shorts that's like that they're competitive version of like instagram and tiktok for stuff Uh and then i will try to do some tricksy stuff to lay lay some some poetry down on on the screen and so you got the, the the cute dog video they got the music in the background and then then some print of some poetry or something on the uh, on the screen there um, right that's the stuff that i just may actually just come up on that with on the spot or maybe it may might come out of like some previous work hmm. so how would you say now i know you mentioned briefly in the very beginning about using your poetry on your youtube content but how would you mm-hmm. say that your youtube videos have helped portray you more now as a poet than prior I don't know because I'm not so sure about that. I I, I don't think that I don't think most people really care about that. I, um, <laughs> to be honest with <laughs> you, <laughs> you don't think. Okay, so let okay, let me gather my thoughts here a second. Okay, so from what I'm I'm getting from you is that you took a lot from using the analytical data to be able to create a lot more platform as far as your videos, correct? Yes. Okay. So, but in the beginning, you thought it would be nice to have the paranormal and plus a little bit of poetry, right? I actually wasn't going to do poetry at all, but okay. I, it, it, it creeped in because I went into my, my poetry and I went, and looked at the poems that had relevant content, content-wise that it, it was congruent with what the the general thing is going on in my head, and and, and I'm still I still do that because I have I have quite a bit of poetry that is 
is about consciousness or is about stuff like that. And right. And so, so I mean, anyway, that's 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 all okay. I have to say. About that. Okay. <laughs> um, since we mention your poetry, um, and, and since you seem to wear a lot of hats, according to your bio, so mm-hmm. let's dive a little bit into the tones of poetry. Let's pull back from the YouTube and talk yeah. about just the poetry. Can you tell us about yours in general? Well, there is the the whole um, like for the last body of poems that I put together. It started at last year's April Poetry Month, and, and like about a weekend, I thought, oh, you know, it'd be great ideas to is to see if I could do a a whole book. Let's say a hundred page poetry manuscript where. Page one comes from page one of some random book. Page two comes from page two of some random book. Well, I wrote quite a few of these poems, but I settled on, I managed to do 38 consecutive poems. But but when I got to the last five pages, the last five pages took me two months because well, actually, it was the first five pages because I found that in the first five pages of any given book, there's not much words that are actually usable. Okay. So, so I don't remember. Let's say if I take a look at this one, and so page one came from I don't know what I can't remember the book, but I oh well, that's right. I think it was called the late great planet Earth. Um, so page one reads. A perfect night, warm, lemon trees, perfume, tiki torches, aroma of steaks, tantalizing wishes. We were alone with our appetites, overheated, waiting, knowing, hoping, obsessed with the future, the the desire to know beyond understanding the mind. Hmm. That's that's rather deep. Yeah. So the the rules that I make for myself when I write poetry is is I don't write poetry from poetry. Okay. And so, so I think you know I have to be open to find a story, otherwise I won't find a story. So I don't know so if that makes. So when sense. you no, I, I I'm trying to. I'm trying to grasp what you're thinking. I'm following you a little bit on the lines of that. Mm-hmm. But when you talk about the themes of poetry, let, let's break it down. Let me let me try to break it down in a way that we can all understand maybe where you're coming from. So when you're talking about your poetry and you're talking to the themes of the poetry, how do you work to define yours? Oh, you know, I don't really worry about that when I'm writing oh. that stuff. Okay. I don't I don't really think in terms of themes and meanings until until after I've like read it like a hundred times. Oh, okay. So you just free write it and see if it yes. comes out and oh okay. All right. Yeah, yeah, yeah. I free write everything or auto or a lot of, I do a lot of like when I paint I do auto writing when I paint. Mm-hmm. I don't really think in turn I do when I when I of course except for the stuff that I sell the stuff that I sell is all um, similar, similar things that are in my head. And so, but. So you're just driven forward by your art. So you write as you paint. It just, the image appears as it comes on to the canvas. Yes. Yeah. Yeah. So. Okay. Awesome. (laughs) So, yeah. So like when I'm doing this, this writing, I generally do not want to to know what the printed word says itself. I try not to read it at all. I just words pop out at me, and then I then I either I write those down, and and those are the one, and and so that's what I will string it together and um and, and go from there. I think and, I think in a way I, if I'm following your thought, and you let me know if this is any similar. I write, I've written books, but 
I'll start with the main plot idea. And then from mm-hmm. then I just I just write. I just let it go. I don't know the ending until I get to the ending and I just let the inspiration of the process drive the story forward. Is that similar to what you're trying to tell me? That is similar because there was a time when I was trying to write um fiction and and that also got that got interrupted with like jobs jobs uh um the amount of time having to spend on a job um you know when you when you work in 40 hours you can maybe swing it but when you when the jobs start to get you going up to like 60 hours a week it's kind of hard to keep up with stuff and you and so where I, I I tried to do that, you know, you read those things. Oh, you got to outline it and do all this. Shit and sorry, oh, and then, <laughs> yeah. then and we'll then, put a big uh, beep across that. <laughs> yeah. Okay. All right. You try to do all the, all the all that stuff, and then and and I and and for years I was like trying to do all that. My phone is like beeping at me, and um. And that didn't work for me. But when I did start writing, I just started writing and the stuff came out of me. I did have a char- some characters in mind and, and all that because I actually invented those characters when I was like like 16 years old or something. But <laughs> Right. I can follow that. Um, so I'm not sure how much this my next question is going to per se, to what you do then. But we'll, we'll swing with it, okay? <laughs> you okay. let me know if I'm on some kind of base. So let's let's not assume when you write. Let's talk about after the finished project, okay? Since you you kind of let it flow from you, let's, let's push that back and we only look at the finished work, okay? We won't talk about this in the sense of when you're writing, all right? Mm-hmm. So, okay, so let's talk personification. Talk to me about the attributes of personal nature or human characters within your poetry how do you say when the ending the ending bit comes out how do you define the personification of your whatever imagery that you're trying to put like person place or thing explain that to me well i don't know if i can answer that question because a lot of times I'll I, I'll see the finished product and I'm absolutely amazed that I wrote it. And that's actually even before I was doing even clip art stuff, it was the same way um, and had that experience. And okay. then, um, or, you know, a lot of the, 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 the ones that I really marveled at was when um, I read through it and I think, oh, this is like, like a whole novel. You know, it has like all the huge the story arc that goes from in in and everything and um and then where it ends up and um I don't have any examples off the top of my head, but uh All right. Well what? let me let me ask you this. Let's talk about your poetry in relation to your art as a painter. Okay. Tell me when you paint, does that influence the poetry? I don't know. I think they're just like they're they're like different they're different things. They're different okay. things all together. Because when I paint, I just usually just paint landscapes. Oh, okay. And so have you have you ever painted something that's inspired the poetry? Um, I started painting. when my writer's voice just shut off. Really? Okay. Yeah. So you basically took a, you needed a creative outlet. So poetry was on the back burner and then you moved forward through the art. Is that where I'm getting? Yeah, that, that was, that was that. I was like, yeah. Um, yeah. Cause I, was, I don't know. It was, I was doing food service in a casino at that time. And oh, okay. yeah, I'm um, doing like, waiting and alcohol service and stuff like that and right um i get i get that so tell me the beginning of your creativeness like you felt that you needed to create was it in poetry we we know the art came after that was poetry always your first basis or did you try your hand at more writing i know you said you did a little bit so tell me what came first 
it was it was the poetry that came first okay um but i did there were things that were earlier like you know and and um in like grammar school and so forth and mm. my, my mother told me that i used to like write little stories in like um like the second grade or something like that and right um <laughs> yeah <laughs> I, I just, I just yeah. Made, made made stuff up all the time and so um but i think what what was hard for me was um that I have this uh, learning difference called uh, audio processing disorder. And so mm -hmm. learning English itself was really, really super hard. And so I wasn't really, I was still struggling to read at the fourth grade. Right. And so, um, and, and so I had all these preconceived ideas that you had to do these things in these different stages. And then, Otherwise, you couldn't do it. And then, but um, eventually, I let go of that stuff. And that's when I guess when I started doing the writing um, and the poetry. And it kind of started with some poem I wrote when I was working at a gas station. And then, <laughs> and then, and then, then it was like years later. And then it just came out of me. I, I had went to went to Israel and I spent a month in Israel. When I came back, I was just writing. Um, that's very interesting how you say that, how you had a, you felt things had to go a certain way. And when you let go of that, then you were able to be more creative. Tell me what you had to let go of, if, if it's not too personal for you. No, I had to let go of the fact that all these teachers and stuff were telling me stuff that wasn't, that for me, for my way of learning, it wasn't true. Oh, okay. And so like this, the order of operations, you have to start here and go there. And so it's like, um, I didn't learn arithmetic until I, I took chemistry and out and, um, and algebra. And I didn't learn really got to get a good grasp on algebra until I took calculus. Oh, wow. And, Cause I have a, my degrees in mathematics and wow. math was, um, was the easier language to learn. That was my timer, so I hope that didn't oh, alarm okay. you too much. <laughs> that's okay. all right. That's fine. That's fine. Uh, not, and, but you actually, you're actually, um, and it's okay if we go over just a little bit, because what yeah. you're saying is very interesting. Um, I know we kind of had a slower start into the interview, but that is a very interesting what you went through. And you have degrees, and math wasn't, from what I'm understanding, please let me know if I'm, if I'm not correct on this. So math wasn't your strong point, but then as you moved forward into another process, the past process became clearer to you. Is that what I'm getting from that? Yeah, yeah, the math, um, the math wasn't my strong suit, but the math was very concise language. Ah. And, and then I also uh, did a, almost a full second major in religious studies. No. And and because it was the story, because well, I think I chose it because I I could get A's in it, and I was wasn't getting getting A's in anything else, and and um and and so so yeah, and um. That, but even and, but even what I'm getting from that, even not being an A student, you still walked away from education with degrees, right? A degrees attached to your name. I mean I that did. that is exceptional. I, I, I'm going to tell you something, just, just something that was told to me when I was a kid. And I, I was never that honor roll, but I always was very close to merit roll or I would get merit roll. And I had a biology teacher who told me, she said to me, she says, the kids that get that easy A don't often strive for it, but the children that have to really work for the grade, they'll carry that with them. And they will make more of themselves because of that. So just you telling me this shows to me with having degrees attached to your name says that you went above and beyond anything that anyone else offered you. So that's exceptional. Yes. Yes. So congrats to you. 
Well, I want to thank you very much, William, for being with us tonight. Yeah. Yeah. Well, thank you for coming on to the show. And I want to take this opportunity, since we're at the end of our podcast tonight, to tell everyone about our Amazon deal of the day. Okay. And this Amazon deal, guys, I have to tell you, I own three of them already. <laughs> it's a Samsung Sung Galaxy Z Flip wireless charger, Galaxy Z Flip. Four and three, it's a five six fast charger, fifteen west wireless charger with Galaxy Z Flip Four, and it's easy to carry. It's got the adapter. It was twenty four ninety nine, and now guys, it's twenty percent off for nineteen ninety nine. I will have the link in the bio for as always. Thank you so much to our listeners for once again coming in. Until next time, bye bye for now.